Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Um, two in a row? What? Hey, what? We're recording two in the same day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are a bit behind, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, we wanted to catch up a little bit and get things back on track here. Um, but we just finished Jeremiah chapter 37. That is correct. Do you remember what happened? Well, um, let's see. I think... Well, the important bit is this, I think, is that they uh, the the Israelites recognize that Jeremiah is actually a spy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, the the Jerusalem guys did not specifically be no, like, no, 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 no. he's a fucking a spy. spy. He's just he's a fucking spy. Like that wasn't declared by Jerusalem, but a guard certainly did say those words. Right, right. Yeah, and yeah. they threw him in a pit. Yeah, and then um, King Zedekiah asked his opinion about something, and then he threw him in the better jail. The better jail. I mean, yeah. the, the <laughs> less pit-like jail. The less pit-like jail. Yeah. Yeah. The good so, jail instead of the bad jail. Right, and it was a story that we'd heard before. It was when the Babylonians went to go fight um, Egypt instead of Israel, and yeah. there was a cease in the siege and and all that wonderful stuff. But they were like, "Hang on, you just sit right here. Don't go anywhere. Right. Yeah. I'll deal with you in just a minute." So that was uh, Jeremiah chapter 37. Sure as fuck was. Which means that we're getting into... Jeremiah chapter 38. All right, let's do this. Okie dokie. All right, we are getting into Jeremiah chapter 38. Okay. And as has been usual for the last several chapters, I have a couple notes before we begin. Okay. First of all, this chapter is numbered as Jeremiah chapter 45 in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also this chapter is part of that narrative that I described yesterday that is its own little section. Right. And that is chapters 37 through 44. Okay. Okay. All right. So... Here we go, getting into it. Are you ready? I'm ready as I'm going to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, Shephatiah, you know, Shep you know, Shephatiah. I don't really, though. He's the son of Matan. Don't know that guy either. Okay. So that guy, plus Gedaliah, the son of Peshur, <sighs> plus Jakal, the son of Shelemiah. So lots of guys. And Peshur, the son of Melchiah. Uh huh. Okay. So yeah. a bunch of guys. All those people. Mm hmm. They heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken to all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, He who remains in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. You sure Remember, has said that a lot, yeah. yeah. But he who goes over to the Chaldeans shall live. Remember, he was telling them, you should probably just give spy. up. Because yeah. he's a spy. I totally believe that. Yeah. No, I mean, all my life. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, that's what he is. Yeah. His life shall be as a prize to him, and he shall live. Thus says the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Okay, so. I think it's not the, the Lord saying this, it's the king of Babylon saying this. Yeah. And if you give up, I won't kill you. Yeah. And Jeremiah is like trying right. to get the people to not die. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah may even be a good guy in all this. Sure. I don't know, but because he's. In so far as he doesn't want his people to die. Right. Assuming that that's why he's doing this and not just trying to save his own ass. Right. Who right. knows? Yeah. Like, but he sure comes across as a fucking spy. He does. He does. So. And I'm I'm not necessarily convinced that he's in the wrong for being a spy, but he's certainly not hearing from God. Right. He's just right. a political tool. That's what tool. I'm saying. This is just all politics. Yeah. This is all bullshit. Yeah. Okay. So, therefore, yeah, yeah. because Jeremiah kept spouting that shit, mm -hmm. the princes, those... Four guys that I mentioned. Were these the good princes or the bad princes? The bad princes, okay. remember? Sorry, there was a lot of princes. Yeah, but the good ones were 15 years ago. We're done with them. Yeah, but we bounce around time in, in Jeremiah No, all but the time. remember, we're in the we're narrative. In the yeah, the narrative. Okay. Yeah, right. we're in this, this solid narrative section. Sure, okay? okay. So 
you know, those same princes that were mean and bad. Yep. That were like, throw them in jail, toss them in the pit. They're the same ones. Take them to that scribe Jonathan's house. Yeah. He's got a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those guys. Yeah. Okay. Said to the king, please let this man be put to fucking death. Mm. For thus he weakens the hands of the men of war who remain in this city. He's bad for morale. I mean, is what that's they're saying. Actually, not not a bad argument, right? Really, right. and so far as I mean, if this guy is like just spouting spy shit, you're all you gonna know? die. You're all gonna die. Right. Lay down your arms. It's not good for morale. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, he's bad for the men of war who remain in the city and the hands of all the people by speaking such words to them. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. don't disagree. I I'm not saying that it. Look, whether know. God exists or not, that's, well, it's not really up for debate. But, I mean, <laughs> you know, it, in, the, in the realm that we are entertaining that idea, yeah. let's just say that's up for debate. Sure. but In canon. In that's canon, up. yeah. Yeah. But, like, if you are in the minority and you're, you're ruining morale in a city, mm -hmm. you are not good for that city. Right. In that moment. Exactly. In time. In that, in that point in history. Yeah. So, they are not mistaken. They're not nice guys, but they're not wrong. Right. Bad guys can sometimes be right. And we, we're only hearing Jeremiah and, and Baruch's side. So, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, to be fair. Yeah. For this man, these princes are still talking about yeah, Jeremiah. Yeah. This man does not seek the welfare of this people, but their harm. Uh, they're not right about that, I don't think. I mean, yeah. I think that's, I think that they just disagree about the best course of action. Sure. And. I think it's wrong to say that he just wants us all to fucking die. But also, you have to look at it from the spy perspective. And if he's conspiring with people that are trying to demolish the city, as opposed to conspiring with people like the Egyptians who occasionally try to help them out. Right. It looks like he's trying to do harm. You know, I'm just saying. Okay, from so their you're, perspective, saying, you're saying that they want us to lay down our arms so that they can just kill us all. Well, how are you supposed to know what they're going to do? Okay, right? I see. Like he's saying see. he knows, but like they're going to, they're fighting us. They're they're at war with. They're us, attacking right? us, so they might. So just... how are we supposed to trust what yeah. they're going to do to us? That's fair. That's Hell, fair. in the past, the Israelites have destroyed entire, heaped them up in piles. And, it's you true. Know, I mean, burn the so bodies. I, why would blood. they seek to have something different done to them? You know, yeah. like I would You're expect right. the same. Maybe. You're right. Then Zedekiah the king said, "Look." He's in your hand, for the king can do nothing against you. So Zedekiah was very cowardly. Got it. Did not stand up to them. He didn't have a lot of power. No. Okay. Clearly. And I have some notes about this whole happening. Sure. Okay. So those guys that I told you about, they were princes of Judah, and they were men connected to the royal family in various fashions. Okay. Okay. So they were aristocrats. Uh, ar aristocrats. <laughs> Somebody loves Disney. It's me. They were aristocrats who had their own status and interests to protect as the catastrophe of the complete Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem drew near. Yeah. So they were trying to protect their own selves. And I don't exactly blame them. No, I don't either. I don't either. But uh, it's just so complicated, you know? Right. All right. So. They took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Melchiah, the king's son, which was in the court of the prison. I feel like they just should have called it the dungeon of Melchiah because that sounds really ominous. I know, right? You know? That should be the name of a band, right? <laughs> dungeon of Melchiah. Melchiah's dungeon. And they let Jeremiah down with ropes. Oh, damn. They wanted him to die, but they didn't want to kill him themselves. Right. So they right. lowered him with ropes. Okay. And in the dungeon, there was no water, but mire. So Jeremiah sank in the mire. Damn. That's yeah. rough. So, okay. I have more notes. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. So the dungeon as described is assumed to be a cistern. Most houses in Jerusalem had private cisterns for storing the water collected during a rainfall or from a nearby spring. Wait, wasn't he just in a cistern the last time and then he yes. got taken out of it and now he's because back in one? He was in one and then he asked, please, could you not? Right. Could I please get out of here? I'm going to die. Right. And so, yeah, then he was put in um, the, the better prison. The better prison. But right. clearly he was still able to come and go because he went right back out there and was talking his shit again. Uh, okay. And these princes were like, uh, excuse you. Right. You need to get back into that pit. Okay. Right. And so they threw him into a different one. Right. But But very carefully with their dainty little paws. Sure. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Um, these cisterns were usually pear-shaped with a small opening at the top 
which could be covered over if necessary to prevent accidents or contamination of the water. Okay. Okay. So he's in this pit that yeah has no water in it but it's just like mud at the bottom so he's like slowly squelching around in just the mud right, right okay so not fun not fun and also i don't know if you recall the description of the cistern from the previous chapter but he could not stand he couldn't lay comfortably right. like it was just not a place that people are supposed to be because yeah. it's for fucking water right not people <laughs> right don't get in a cistern right just maybe you should write a sticky note in case you forget don't get in cisterns yeah okay yeah. i mean everybody needs one of those right i need a cistern and i need a sticky note not to get into it <laughs> yes okay so now a bed malek this cool dude okay he's an ethiopian one of the eunuchs who was in the king's house he heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. Mm -hmm. When the king was sitting at the gate of Benjamin, Abed Malek went out of the king's house and he spoke to the king saying, um, excuse me, sir, my lord, the king, these men have done evil and all that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet. I'm like assuming he's like whispering. He's like, hey, king, king. But, hey. but, but wait, didn't the princes come to him and say we're doing this stuff? To yeah. Him? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Basically, the king seems to me like a very soft Trump where he just <laughs> does whatever the last person he spoke with suggested. Okay. All right. You know? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, this guy, he's like, hey, they did bad to him whom they have cast into the dungeon and he is likely to die from hunger in the place where he is for there's no more bread in the city. So. Right. You know, they can't even throw bread down to him. He's yeah. like, dude, dude. This prophet is going to die. Is that really what you want? Right. So then the king commanded Abed Malek, the Ethiopian, saying, take here 30 men with you and lift Jeremiah, the prophet, out of the dungeon before he dies. I have some notes. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, Abed Malek, that Ethiopian guy. Yeah. Um, it just means servant of the king. So even if it was the man's proper name, it shows that he had no identity of his own. Okay. So that was either his title or his name is his title. Sure. Like, basically, he's no man. Okay. You know, and being a foreigner and a eunuch, Abed Malek was excluded from the temple and most Jewish rituals. Right. So he was like a outsider kind of guy. And yet somehow he had more compassion and mercy than most of the ruling class who participated in all these rituals all the time. Okay. Which that's very interesting. Right. Okay. Now, because the Septuagint and one Hebrew manuscript read three instead of 30, some scholars choose the lesser figure. Like, remember the king said, take 30 guys yeah. with you and go get them out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause it doesn't take 30 guys to pull them out. Right. Right. So in some translations, it says 30 and in some three and a lot, because it, um, said three in a lot of the important ones. Right. People are like, a lot of scholars are like, that's probably more likely. But while 30 men were not needed to do the work of pulling, there would likely have been several standing guard so that none of the influential people who did want Jeremiah dead could prevent his rescue. Okay. So I'm like, who cares? Honestly, it could go either way. We we don't know. We don't know what the king wanted. He was so fucking wishy washy. Well, and this whole this whole thing with uh, Abed Malek, Abed, Abed Malek, Abed Malek. Mm -hmm. Um, it strikes me as odd that he cares so much about some. Why would he care about Jeremiah? Um, because he believed in the prophet. Okay. And All because right. the prophet has been saying this shit for years at this point, and everything that he has said has come to pass. All right. That, okay. that they have lived to see. You know what I mean? Everything sure. that has happened within their time, according to well, this. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Zedekiah, was he placed in position by um, the king of Babylon? Or was it, I think he was placed in position by the king of Babylon, wasn't yes. he? Yes. So the people surrounding him were probably more closely aligned with Babylon than they were with um, Egypt, mm -hmm. I, if I had to guess. Yes. So th that would make sense that they would be helping the spy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all interesting, I'm just right? Saying, you know, that's yeah. <laughs> like, who even fucking knows right. who was doing I'm what? I'm just trying to keep track of all the political, you know, machinations. Back and forth here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Um, so Abed Malek took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took from there 
old clothes and old rags and led them down by ropes into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Then abed the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, Please put these old clothes and rags under your armpits, under the ropes. And Jeremiah did so. So they pulled Jeremiah up with ropes and lifted him out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison, you know, again. So he was still in jail, Mm -hmm. but not in the dungeon. He was back in the good jail. Well, how are they going to, how are they going to guarantee, like, they're going to rescue him, but leave him in the jail. Who's to stop the princes from putting him right back in the freaking cistern? I don't know. I don't know. I wish that Jeremiah at this point would just, like, fucking stay, just stay in your room. Right? Guy. You've you've done your piece. Stay in your room now. <laughs> but he just he keeps going. I don't know. I guess. But remember at the beginning, like he was like at the beginning of this book, he was like, they're being mean to me. They're making fun of me and calling me names. Right. right. And God was like, he ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, you can't right. handle yeah, this. You are not even going to know. Yeah. So I just think it's funny. Like, I just I, I've been holding that in the back of my mind to pull out when it shit got bad enough to be able to say oh dang okay right okay yeah now i do also want to point out they made a big point of writing in that malek the ethiopian i'm sorry abed malek the ethiopian um made sure to put cloths under um jeremiah's arms when they pulled him up yeah. so, because he was probably so emaciated right um and you know close to starvation and stuff yeah th- it, it's such a like unimportant detail it's really odd that they were like and they brought him up very carefully right like why did that make it in you know yeah like details that matter are well, not put in this fucking book, but they brought him out. Maybe to show the reverence that they had for him or okay. the, the okay. you know what I'm saying? Like sure. they, they treated him with respect, with regard. Okay. You know, I like that. Thank you. That That's a good answer to my it question. Just, you know, that's my only possible. <laughs> I just, I just find it odd. The details that they leave out versus the details that they choose to sure. add. Yeah. That, I mean, is nice and all. I'm glad that they were nice to him, but that, wasn't the most important detail that they could have right. put. No, and, and the fact that they leave him in the fucking jail is really odd to me. Well, the court jail, though, we talked about this last time. It's a nice place, and he has a little bit of freedom to come and go in the city. Insofar as he doesn't get thrown into a cistern by princes. Yes. Which he's already it happened to him now twice. Right. Well, so- once was a guard, be fair. <laughs> 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 the the princes only did it the second time. I'm just saying. No, you're totally right. I agree with you. Okay, but the chapter goes on. Yeah. Okay. Then Zedekiah the king sent and had Jeremiah the prophet brought to him at the third entrance of the house of the Lord. Not the first, not the not, second, yeah, the, not the, the fourth, one. the third one. Right. And the fifth was way too many. I guess, okay? yeah. And the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you something. Hide nothing from me. What do you think he's going to ask? Is there any way for him not to die? That would be my guess. Right, yeah. That, uh, <laughs> would you like to take bets? Or should we both just say, yeah, that's probably what that's he's asking. That's probably what he's asking. Yeah. Okay, let's find out. All right. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, if I declare it to you, will you not surely put me to death? And if I give you advice, you'll not listen to me. I mean, fair enough. I mean, he's right? like, who who fucking cares what, how I answer you? Although like, the last time he gave him advice and he just put him in the nice prison. True. So, I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, don't you think that he's like, dude, I'm tired of playing this fucking game with you. Right. I, yeah. You've stuck me in jail twice through various other people. My story hasn't changed. I've been beat. I've been, you know... Um, put in the stockade, the torture right. device. Like my answer. I will isn't give him changing. credit. He has stuck to a story. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's like, "What the fuck do you care what I say?" Again, according to Jeremiah. Yeah, according to Jeremiah, Jeremiah was very brave and virtuous. <laughs> I mean, according to wife, wife was the best wife that ever was. That's right. You are right? though. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> so Zedekiah the king swore secretly to Jeremiah, saying. Ugh, As the Lord lives, who made our very souls, I will not put you to death, nor will I give you into the hand of these men who seek your life. Hmm. But let me ask you this. Yeah. He said, as the Lord lives. Oh, sir, do you believe in God now? Am I to take your word? Right. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you've already been wishy-washy 
left and right, you let people put me in jail twice. But he obviously does, at some level, care about this guy's opinion. He keeps asking him. Right. So. I'm just saying, like, can you honestly, like, trust his word? Oh, by God, huh? You mean the God that I keep telling you? Or the God that you want to believe? Or the God that you're political guys? Like, which God? Right. You know, I... I think I, it's generally, no matter who you're talking to, it's the God they want to believe in. Well, sure. I'm Whether just it's saying, a king or not, you know, so... I'm just saying, like, if I was Jeremiah, I would be like, you know, I appreciate that you sound sincere in this moment. Yeah. I even appreciate that you probably are sincere in this moment. Sure. But five minutes from now... You might change your mind. Your promise honestly means nothing, especially when my story hasn't changed. You have multiple times over. Like, right. it, it's all well and good for you to promise. I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you. And it's the same shit I've been telling you. Sure. And I don't care if you swear on God or not. Right. I mean, that, I don't know. Yeah. Not that I want to take Jeremiah's side, but you get what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord. I guess he decided to trust him in his word. Yeah, sure. like, does it matter? Like, <laughs> right. sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel. If you surely surrender to the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live. I feel like he's like, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> this city shall not be burned with fire and you and your house shall live. But... Motherfucker, if you do not surrender to the king of Babylon's princes, then this city shall be given into the hands of the Chaldeans. They shall burn it with fire and you shall not escape from their hand. Like, hello, right. can you hear me? Yeah. And Zedekiah the king said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have defected to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand and they abuse me. Oh, I would be scared of them, too. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you have to think about it. Like, this whole time, people have probably been sneaking away. Right. right? And yeah. either, like, sneaking as refugees into further cities or being like, fuck this. I'm going to the Chaldeans. They seem all right. Right. Like, they got their shit together. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. Right. But Jeremiah said, no, they shall not deliver you. Please, please obey the voice of the Lord, which I speak to you. So it shall be well with you and your soul shall live. Oh, my God, he's begging him. <laughs> this is crazy. But if you refuse to surrender, this is the word that the Lord has shown me. Okay. Okay. Colon. Are yeah, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, this is, I feel like this is going to be bad. You think it's going to be worse than it's been? I think, I think it's going to be bad. I just have this impression because he's like, listen. Okay. Listen. All right. <laughs> I'm about to tell you some shit. Are you ready? Because <laughs> you brought me in here. You whispered at me. Okay. I'm going to lay it down for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now behold, all the women who are left in the king of Judah's house shall be surrendered to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women shall say, your close friends have set upon you and prevailed against you. Your feet have sunk in the mire and they have turned away again. So they shall surrender all your wives and children to the Chaldeans. You shall not escape from their hand, but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon. And you shall cause this city to be burned with fucking fire. Mm. Do you hear me now, sir? Right. King man. Yeah. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Oof, let no one know of these words and you shall not die. <laughs> He's like, this message sucks. I need a different fortune cookie. I'm throwing this one in the fire like that other fucking scroll. But I won't kill you. I'm not going to kill you. But listen, don't tell anybody else this. Stop walking around the city and saying this shit. Right. But if the prince is here that I have talked with you, this is still Zedekiah talking. Yeah. The fucking king. I, it just keeps striking me like, hi, I'm just this dude talking to a king. No bigs. Right. Right. But if the princes hear that I have talked with you and they come to you and say to you, declare to us now what you have said to the king and also what the king said to you. Do not hide it from us and we will not put you to death. Then you shall say to them, I presented my request before the king that he would not make me return to Jonathan's house to die there. Okay. We good. We good. Then all the princes came to Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they stopped speaking with him for the conversation had not been heard. Okay. Okay. So, 
Zedekiah is like, don't tell them that I asked for your advice again. They're like so pissed at me. Right. And Jeremiah's like, I don't, okay, fine, whatever. Like, that's not my beef, man. Right. Like, I'm I'm not out here trying to get you in trouble with these prince guys. I'm just doing my thing. Sure. So, okay, okay, I won't tell them. <laughs> Now, Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken. Hmm. And he was there when Jerusalem was taken. The end. Okay. Damn, that was an that was a strong finish to that chapter. So, apparently, Zedekiah didn't. I mean, we already knew, but right. Zedekiah did not listen to Jeremiah. Right. And, and, and then the place got taken. Yeah. They were going to burn the place to the ground, though. Does I think, doesn't Jeremiah live through this, though, right? We're still in the middle of the story. Like, this... Yeah. Remember, we're in the middle of a section. But it strikes so, me, though, if they were going to burn the whole place to the fucking ground, if they didn't surrender, that Jeremiah must have had special standing with the Chaldeans <laughs> slash Babylonians right. for them to escort him off the premises. I mean, okay, right now what we're doing is trying to guess what is happening in the next chapter. Sure. Like, we're in the to be continued. What do you right, think right, happens, right, right. right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, maybe they burn the whole city, but... All the oh well we know didn't they take they took Zedekiah with them remember briefly yeah so they probably would have taken Zedekiah and all of his court including the jail guys and since Jeremiah was a prophet or okay. you know spy yeah you know they I'm I'm betting that they took the king and some of his court including Jeremiah and whoever else was you know an uppity schmuck buck name yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. I know. I'm kind of excited, though. Yeah. The story's getting good. So that was Jeremiah chapter 38. It sure as fuck was. Which means that we'll be back tomorrow with... Jeremiah chapter 39, and I'm so excited about it. (laughs) All right. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.